Hello everyone, this is CJ from the University of Washington. In this talk, I will present our work on exploring online mobile app usage as an indicator of sleep behavior and job performance. Understanding the relationship between sleep and job performance has been an important research question. Sleep is essential to both cognitive and psychomotor functions, yet 35% of the US population does not get enough sleep and everyone wants to do well in their jobs, and people hope to learn from the relationship to improve both sleep and job performance. For decades, this relationship has been explored in lab settings. Sleep behaviors were measured with numerous sensors attached to the body. Although it provides accurate measurement, measurements can be biased and do not reflect the actual sleep behaviors since it is done in unnaturalistic settings. The performance test is also measured in a lab setting with controlled performance tests. People often use tests like psychomotor vigilance test, PVT, where they measure how fast people react to a visual stimulus. However, it is still unclear how these simplified tests can be translated into more complex real-world job performance. In these days, recent sleep tracking technologies using smartphone, wearable, and mattress sensor enable people to track natural sleep behavior. And mobile app interaction shows potential to be used for passively measuring alertness, cognitive ability, and performance affected by the sleep behaviors. By leveraging recent advances in sleep tracking, in this work we aim to quantify the relationship between sleep and job performance in real world settings. We conducted a study where we collected naturalistic sleep behaviors using mattress sensors. We collaborated with different organizations to collect participants' objective job performance. However, collecting job performance at scale will be extremely difficult because there are so many professions that consist of different levels of cognitive and psychomotor functions. Inspired by novel use of mobile app interaction for measuring performance, we also explore the feasibility of using mobile app interaction as a proxy measurement for both performance and sleep behavior. So in this talk, I will first demonstrate our findings from revealing relationship between sleep and job performance in real-world settings. Then I will demonstrate feasibility of using app interaction as a proxy measurement for both sleep and job performance. Before going into each research question, I would like to go over our study and data set. For the sleep data, the participants were provided with metric sensors to track their natural sleep behaviors. Then we collected how long they spent time in bed, which is a good proxy measurement for sleep duration. Also, using time in bed, we computed their accumulation of sleep loss over a past week as a metric known as a sleep debt. For the participant, we recruited salespeople from a law consultancy firm. They make and receive phone calls from the customers who are looking for legal advice. Then the salespeople try to make contract by co connecting them to lawyers. So they are mainly evaluated with how many contracts they make every day. And the numbers are reported by the uh, company. Since everyone will have slight, slightly different work hours, we normalize it by hour and use it for our analysis. We also recruited professional American football players from different NFL teams. Their game schedule is roughly one game per week during a season. They are mainly evaluated with how well they play each game. And an organization called Pro Football Focus provides rating for all NFL players for all games. Multiple raters rate all players and the scores are normalized by positions from 0 to 100, uh, 100 scale, which we use for our analysis. To give you an example of game grades, Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback of all time, has an average game grades of 92.5 in the last season. And Matt Ryan, who is a decent quarterback at Atlanta Falcons, has a game grades of 83. As a result, we have a data set with 15 salespeople with 118 nights of sleep that has corresponding job performance measurement. For athletes, we have 19 athletes with 171 nights of sleep and job performance metrics. In fact, 
This is the largest study to date that are conducted outside of lab settings and has multiple job categories. It is often extremely difficult to work with professional athletes and salespeople who are willing to track their sleep and provide their job performance. So this is the larger than any other studies conducted in the past in the real world settings. Using the data, we tried to quantify the relationship between the sleep and job performance in real world settings for different professions. We analyzed the data with Spearman's rank order correlation. In the graphs, we showed an x-axis of sleep debt and y-axis of job performance. We found that sleep debt, which is a cumulative sleep metric, is positively correlated with job performance for athletes and salespeople. But we didn't find a statistically significant correlation for single-day sleep metric, which indicates that sleep behavior over extended periods of time is more important than single night of sleep. The effect size of the correlation shows that if the participant experiences one hour of daily sleep loss for a week, their performance drops 9.5% for athletes and 9% for salespeople. From the actual game grades data, quarterback from Super Bowl, Super Bowl winning team and non-playoff team has game grades difference of roughly 9.5%. Even though we have quantified the relationship between sleep and the job performance in the real-world settings, collecting job performance from each individual is not scalable. From here, I would like to switch gear and demonstrate the passively collected app interaction time can be a proxy measurement for both sleep behavior and job performance. From the study, we have provided the sleep tracking app to the participants. They can review their past sleep history and get insights on improving their sleep. From the app, we have collected app interaction time, where we measure the time between when the participant first see the home screen and make the next touch input. This can be considered as a proxy measurement of participants' ability to process information and proceed to the next screen. And similar methods are used to estimate alertness, cognitive ability, and performance affected by sleep behavior. From the same salespeople and athletes, we were able to collect 122 and 46 app interaction time that are associated with job performance measurement. Using the data, we investigate whether the app interaction time has meaningful relationship uh, with actual job performance. We computed Spearman's rank order correlation for the analysis. In the graphs, we show an x-axis of interaction time and y-axis of job performance. We can see that the shorter interaction time is associated with the higher job performance metrics. However, we only found a statistically significant correlation for athletes. Since the app interaction time is more related to reaction, we suspect it is more sensitive to athletes' performance than salespeople's performance which would require more cognitive ability. The effect size shows that the athletes who are 10 seconds faster in their interaction time had an average of 5 points higher in their game grades. In NFL, 5 game grades account for difference between quarterback reached to a conference championship and quarterback lost at the wildcard wild game. To investigate the relationship between sleep and app interaction, we recruited more participants beyond our initial population to have a broader diversity of participants. Uh, from them, we only, collect, we only collected sleep metrics and app interaction time measurement. As a result, we, collect, uh, we recruited 274 participants and collected more than 7,000 nights of sleep and app interaction measurement. Then using the data, we investigate whether the app interaction time is meaningfully sensitive to sleep behaviors. Here's the graph from the correlation analysis, where we have an x-axis of sleep debt and y-axis of app interaction time. We found that the sleep debt and the app interaction time shows statistically a significant correlation. The effect size indicate that the um, hour of um, daily sleep loss for a week shows 0.7 seconds slower interaction time. So for example, in a 40-yard dash, 0.7 seconds gap 
could be equivalent to um, two yards difference and it's enough to never get caught or tackled. So in this analysis, we demonstrate that the um, app interaction time is sensitive to sleep behavior. However, sleep metric is not the only factor that affects people's interaction time. For example, one person's interaction time can be 12.5 seconds at a certain point. Given that their average interaction time is 10 seconds, we wonder what causes additional 2.5 seconds. Sleep biology literature shows that there are different biological processes can impact people's psychomotor functions, one of which is the circadian rhythm where people's performance naturally degrades and improves over 24-hour cycle. Reaction time is known to be the fastest in the afternoon and the slowest at the, at the night time. Sleep inertia, which is impaired cognitive and psychomotor uh, performance immediately after people wake up, can also impact the reaction time. Homeostatic sleep drive shows that the longer people are awake, the more tired they are and, and longer the reaction time is. Sleep deprivation can also impact people's uh, reaction time. In this analysis, we investigate how each factor contributes to app interaction time. So in order to incorporate these biological processes, we built a generalized additive model to characterize the app interaction time as a function of time since wake up, time of day, and sleep behavior. We extend this model by applying random, random effects intercepts for each participant. In this way, we not only accommodate uh, participant specific performance baselines, but their uh, time invariant um, behaviors um, like caffeine intake, uh, medication, and nap. And it also accounts for device specific effects like rendering capability of the user's smartphone. As a result, the model shows that the interaction time is correlated with biological processes and sleep behavior. Contribution of time since wake up to interaction time aligns with the sleep inertia and homeostatic sleep drive. Time of day shows the interaction time is associated with circadian rhythm. And the more sleep that people have, the longer the reaction time is. In this talk, I'll go through the result on the time since wake up. Please refer to the paper for the rest of analysis. As a result, we have this graph which has an x-axis of time since wake up and y-axis of its in contribution to reaction time. The participants have slowest um, at interaction time after they wake up and gets faster within two hours since um, since they wake up. And this trend uh, aligns with the sleep inertia. And after four hours since wake up, the ab, ab interaction time gets slower as people's uh, sleep pressure increases. And this trend aligns with the homeostatic sleep drive. And the difference between the fastest and the slower, slowest reaction time is around two seconds. Revisiting our examples few slides before, Two seconds slower interaction time can happen when a person starts using smartphone within 30 minutes of wake up and he wakes up really, really early in the morning and when uh, his sleep that is negative five hours. From this analysis, we demonstrate that the app interaction time is meaningfully sensitive to all biological processes as well as sleep behaviors. And we also show that the app interaction time can be a meaningful proxy for uh, performance uh, affected by sleep. To summarize the talk, in this work, we have quantified the relationship between sleep and job performance of two different professions in the real world settings. We also found evidence that the passively captured app interaction time can serve as a useful indicator for job performance and sleep behavior. We believe this provides another mechanism that can be used by researchers to collect relevant psychomotor and cognitive performance measures at scale. Thanks for listening to my talk and I'm happy to take questions.